Hey everyone, welcome back to another Coffee Talk. I'm Rochelle Dene Poth, and I'm really excited today to have Buncey Ambassador Jamie Donnelly, a very good friend of mine, uh, with me to talk about how she's using Buncey and to share some of her ideas and her work. So, Jamie, welcome to Coffee Talk. Thank you. Super excited to finally be invited. Oh, I've <laughs> always been invited. No, uh, it's great to have you. And so I'm looking forward to our conversation and to see some of you know, the examples that you'll share with us. But for anybody who is not familiar with you or the work that you do, could you share a little bit about um, your experience as an educator or your professional journey? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I've been sharing immersive technology for several years now, um, and it's just continued to grow. I share it often with you. Um, so we have a chance to go out and share, you know, augmented and virtual reality. Um, and then, you know, prior to really honing in on that particular area, there were some other things that I did um, that kind of span back several years ago. One being the creation of Global, uh, excuse me, EdCamp Global um, was initially the name and uh, kind of moved away from EdCamp model. And I'm not part of that anymore, but there's some awesome people running it. Um, and so when that started um, was a, an early connection with Buncey because we would reach out to vendors, Deborah Atchison would reach out to folks and ask if they can, you know, use uh, some subscriptions to give out to attendees that were participating in this crazy 24 hour online event. And Buncey was like, absolutely. So very, very early on, we had Buncey contests. Um, people would create in Buncey and do some fun stuff um, during the live event and then people would be able to win subscriptions and do some cool stuff. Now, leap forward several years, um, I started really finding a passion for taking the collaboration and moving it more towards the, um, you know, the connection and action. So while I have this connection, what is our actionable piece? And so that was the start of Global Maker Day. And so while I love, love, love sharing immersive technology, there is this one time a year where I put a lot of emphasis into um, our students being creators of content. Um, so it's been great. Um, Global Maker Day, uh, when this concept first came out, I was in direct connection with Buncey. And while I was doing that and talking about this event, I thought, you know, this would be a, a neat platform to host the event on. So this kind of being our landing page. Um, we do have a website and um, what we do is we use Buncee, but you know, I'll explain a little bit more of kind of what the concept is, but um, we have that all housed inside of our website within Buncee pages. So embedded on the site. So it's been really cool because the functionality of the tool is mm -hmm. often not discussed. It's usually discussed on, you know, the creativity and the design of using Buncee. Whereas for me, the functionality is what allowed me to have a safe place to send classrooms. And so, and Buncey does an incredible job that has always been a huge priority for them um, is having, you know, the privacy of our students and the content really being a safe place for our classroom. So um, because yeah. of that, it's made a tool like Buncey uh, really usable in an event, an online event like Global Maker Day. Yeah, and I love that because, and I was gonna ask you like, what decisions or how do you make a decision about what types of tools to use uh, when you're going to use some different rules and you know you mentioned a lot of them about the, like the functionality and the options and the choices that are available which Buncey has so many and I know that in doing things like Global Maker, Maker Day which I didn't realize how long you have been doing that and then thinking back to whenever I first met you, you were in the stages, I think maybe even doing EdCamp Global, um, also the Global Maker Day, and just seeing how many different people from around the world you were connecting with and then being able to share like these creative presentations and messages where everybody can create with. So that's got to be an awesome feeling, I'm sure. It, you know, it really is. I'm actually going to pull out some of the stats because I think that is important when you talk about Global Maker Day because it's never been necessarily about the quantity of people it's really been mostly about um you know what does this look like in transforming a classroom right. that has been the main goal like this should shake things up in our educational system 
Um, so that, you know, because that's been our intent and focus in this event, you know, there's been incredible organizers that have been part of it. Um, I will definitely give them a shout out as well. Um, and I think that at the end of the day, you know, we started this event in 2016 spring. Um, so it was early on and I want to say maybe a March event or so, um, maybe even April. And so then I was like, okay, I'll do it again in the fall. And then I did it again in the fall and it was like, okay, this cannot happen twice a year. It's too much work. But at the end of the day, we ended up then going to an annual basis. So every October we host another global maker day, but, you know, starting our first two events in 2016. And then now we just finished, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're going into our sixth event this year. So wow. it's kind of crazy to think how, how long that has been, but yeah. Um, yeah, certainly. Okay, so just like you mentioned, finding the right tool. Um, some of the things that we were looking at was using YouTube, of course, at the time, YouTube Live. Um, and going, going live on YouTube was a little bit problematic. Sending classrooms to go find you on YouTube is a problem. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, one of the things that we found, you know, we used um, at the time Google Hangout that then went on. I went through transitions and eventually ended up coming out to where I use a tool like we're using right now, Zoom. Um, so a couple years ago, I want to say my third event in 2017, I switched over to Zoom. Um, and then with Zoom, just uh, being able to live stream out um, on YouTube that way, but having the functionality of Zoom. So where Buncee came into play is they, um, it's funny because I've talked to Buncee about this on, on a couple different occasions and the folks at Buncee and I've told them how I've used it. And I don't know if anybody else has ever done anything like this, but I essentially take Buncee and I take an embed code from YouTube. So if you want to share out YouTube uh, link, you share out a link. But in addition on YouTube, you can share out an embed code. And so I would copy that code and inside of Buncee on the, one of the main pages, it would actually, I would paste in the code. And so YouTube would show up inside of Buncee. So what that restricted people from seeing was any recommended uh, videos, mm -hmm. which is exactly what I didn't want people to see because who knows what's gonna pop right. up. They didn't see a chat, which was really helpful because who knows what somebody's gonna post, right? And, um, and then they didn't see any other options to go to any other videos in YouTube. They're just watching what's happening. And mm -hmm. what's awesome about it is I would set up these events and I would have it set up on YouTube where it would be scheduled for a specific date. So I had the embed code because I already had the site on YouTube okay. ready to go when it went live. And so I'm able to put that into Buncee with that embed code before mm -hmm. it ever goes live. And so that's sitting there kind of waiting, saying this event is scheduled for in two days. And so people can go check out that Buncee and have access to the content prior to the event. But once the event went live, it showed up live inside okay. of Buncee. So um, it was just a really cool way of um, the safety, accessibility, um, but then taking this concept of going to YouTube and being live to a right. whole new level. So if, if you're ready for me, I'm ready to kind of share the transitions and what yeah. it started out as and, and why Buncee was such a great way of, of hosting an online event. Well, you know, I will tell you one thing. I was uh, going back and looking for some ideas in the Buncee blogs, I don't know, in the last week or so. And I came across a blog that they had done with you back in 2016 about Global Maker Day. And that's when I realized like, wow, that's how long that had been. But I loved what, when you talked about like the global maker day and the makerspaces project and saying that it, the idea was to you know, create a space where students could um, create something that means something to them. And then they could share it on a global scale and all of that and being able to do that. And you had some examples there that students or, or teachers had done too with using Buncee. And I thought, I love that because it is really the space where students can find exactly what they want and we have those abilities to connect you know, globally. And now when we have things like the immersive reader, whatever the students are creating when they are exchanging their ideas globally, like they can have that language translated and it's now, you know, it's a teachable thing mm -hmm. that they've created. So they're, they're creating and they're consuming, but it's such, you know, an authentic and meaningful way to do that. So Yes, I would love, and I'm sure everybody else would love to see examples and how you do that. 
Okay, perfect. And I will say that, um, you know, starting out with this event, you know, it was never about that quantity. Um, but seeing the progression throughout the time of when we started in 2016, we had, you know, under 500 classrooms join in. But if you think about 500 classrooms, like that's a lot of classrooms. That was from 18 different countries. So when you're talking about immersive reader and that being implemented now in Buncee, that has a huge benefit to those non-English speaking classrooms to be able to join right. in. Um, and then even this year, talk about accessibility. This is the first year, um, Mary Alice Kern is part of the organizing team and she connected me with a classroom that does coding, um, Deaf Kids Code. And so this organization goes out and helps support those, the Deaf classrooms and wow. they are really supporting them with the resources to get started. And so this year for the first time, we actually had our students present um, in sign language for one of the sessions um, that were demonstrating what they created using code. And then they had their educator that was there to translate what they were saying and help support that connection for those. Um, never happened before, but what an incredible time yeah. we live in that across the world, those students are sharing. And when you said sharing on a global scale, it's not just sharing globally. This is authentic. We are not a corporation. We're not going out there and pretending to be Microsoft or you know Skype in the classroom. Like we are just a group of individuals that love doing this, that love seeing what our kids do. And then just giving them the day is not yeah. enough. That's, right. that's never been the point. The day is focused on change. And then once that change has been made, then we're seeing them just, just go crazy. So you can literally sit there, look at hashtag Global Maker Day for the day of the event. And it will bring you to tears what these kids create. And they are immediately asking, when do we get to do this again? Yeah. Because they just want the opportunity. So, all right, with that, I'll go ahead and okay. share my screen. Um, and that um, will be a chance for you guys to kind of see the transition from when I started to, um, you know, where, where it is today. All right. And I'll just, I'll share my desktop. And on my screen, I'll show you uh, my Buncees that I have created throughout the time um, and just some of the things that I've used it for. But of course, really heavily focused on Global Maker Day um, first. And so I went in and, let's wait for that to populate. Um, this was the very first one that was created for um, Global Maker Day 2016. So the initial concept was we're going to take this day and we're going to have four different videos going live at the same time. So one was going to be focused on being a designer, one was going to be a recreator, um, one of the videos uh, throughout the day was going to be focused on being an entrepreneur and then a global problem solver. And so as people came in, they went into these areas and then when they clicked on it, then they had the option of going in to YouTube. So that was the first concept of kind of linking them out um, because of the way that it was set up initially. So that was um, the very first Global Maker Day. And then um, the, I will tell you, after doing it that way, I had shared this out with um, the, uh, my personal school district at the time. And we had a professional development day that came out. And what we did is we shared it in Buncee. So for all the teachers, we had a page where it showed what was happening throughout the day. And then they got to go in and each of these were linked to uh, Eduphoria. And in our case, we were linking them to a spot to um, register for the session. And so each of these sessions that were offered throughout the day, they got to select which one they went to. And we kind of laid it out using Buncee. So when they saw that I had used it with Global Maker Day, they saw the um, availability of using it even in professional development at school. All right. So then um, Global Maker Day for that first group, um, the schedule that day looked something like this. Again, created in Buncee, um, but shared with what they can do, which is intense, right? Um, so we had different presenters all throughout the day. Um, and then each of the timeframes, what we did is we listed it at Eastern time. It's always been listed 
at Eastern time, just because that's one of the more common time zones for the US that is used. Um, plus, we really wanted to connect with classrooms that um, would align more with Eastern time than Pacific time. So more classrooms actually are closer aligned with that Eastern time in the US um, outside. So that, that helped us to kind of know which time zone we really wanted to emphasize. Um, and then uh, GMT time was that universal time, right, that everybody gets. So I listed that as well. And that um, allowed people to be able to come in and kind of align their own time zone with that. Uh, share it out a couple different ways for them to align with their time zone. But essentially that's, that's how it all worked out. And then um, sometimes there was things like we didn't necessarily have a session during that specific time. So just got filled in so that they didn't accidentally go there um, during that scheduled time. So we had some openings. Um, but, you know, Nancy Penchev has been part of this event from day one. So she's been part of Global Maker Day. She is now part of the organizing team. We actually just hosted Global Maker Day at her school in Orlando um this past excuse me in miami um this past october so she'll be joining us for um global maker day 2020 which is exciting and she's part of that organizing team and she has been able to bring in her students at every level um, throughout the events and this first one and this is what's so powerful about this is this first one she brought in um, a student that was extremely shy so he was um, just, you know, really was um, having a hard time communicating in schools and, and knowing how to vocalize kind of where he's at and, and just kind of at those years where you're still trying to figure out who you are. Um, it was because of Global Maker Day that gave him the confidence to do what he's doing now. And now I believe he's a senior in high school. Um, and he, I, you know, he was able to be there at the last Global Maker Day. But just to see that, you know, you start at this place, you have this authentic global audience, you took that challenge and you were successful to now that was your boost to be able to go out and do the things that you're doing now. Happens to be in this case, like the superintendent, it's a private school, but the superintendent's son. So it was really just cool to see how this event, and of course they valued the event because of that, to see how it had directly affected their students. So throughout the day, there was those four events and then they can go in and watch and, and see that schedule as well. So um, going back to that dashboard and seeing how it all went down, um, one of the things that we did inside of this event, let's see, I think this might be the official so I can show you the other slides. So the second page, of course, was the schedule of the day so that they knew when to go in and how to participate. And then that third slide was some of the um, different places that they can go and get more information about. So some of the things that were being shared, we wanted them to have kind of this virtual vendor hall of um, different resources. So we included some YouTube videos for them to go back and watch, but also those connections with the company. So they knew like, okay, I loved this presentation, but where do I follow up? How do I bring that? into my district or my classroom. So um, we wanted them to have a place that they can go back to and um, have access you know, to this information in the future. So there was some cool stuff shared, um, certainly beneficial to the group and, and taking a leap. And at the time, I will tell you, 2016, there was, people just didn't even know what a makerspace was. You know, that was still so like, what are we talking about right now? Um, of course, now we're in a different place in education, but at the time it was, it was very much almost just sharing out, like, what is this? Why do we need it? Do we need it? Can we, you know, and throughout the time that I've been doing this, it's never been about go out and build a maker space or have this certain space you do it, but really just making that culture a part of what your classroom looks like every day, um, our students creating. So cool stuff. Um, and then I um, did, of course, some ne the next events, we did some um, Global Maker Day 2017. This is kind of when things started to change up a little bit and how it was being used in Buncee. And so um, on this first page, you can see kind of the advertisement. And what I did is I did a screen capture video of this. Um, and in that video, I shared it out on social media so people can join in and, and uh, Kind of just you know that that letting them know what's happening and uh page 
two was the live feed. So again, the embedded code in here. So if they were watching it live, they were able to come to page two and see it happening real time. Now, if it wasn't happening live, that's okay. Like right now it's not happening live, but they can go back and watch that. And instead of having four different strands of videos happening throughout the day, we brought it down to just one video every half an hour. So we had uh, presenters coming in starting at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And then throughout the day, there was different presenters. And instead of having to go out to go find those places, they all found it inside of Buncee. So um, it was nice because they were just essentially looking for the time of when they would be joining in. Um, some of the people on here, if you don't recognize some of them, they are some incredible people. I am so thankful to be connected to um, such an, I mean, these educators, and I'm a learner, so I have no claim in saying I'm this makerspace genius. I'm absolutely not. I'm a learner, um, but at the same time, it was giving me a chance to, you know, connect and uh, really give other people a chance to connect with some of the best people in this area. So it's just been really neat to see that happen. Uh, inspiring stories that were happening throughout the day and um, different areas of interest, even like Ed Obstacles with Valerie Lewis, it heavily focused on um, you know, physical education. I mean, that's something that people weren't thinking about in connection to being a maker, but they were making their own obstacle courses and building them and, and bringing them to events. And so looking at how all this fits across the curriculum was really important. So as they got to see kind of what was happening throughout the day, um, then they went in. And then the challenge here is something that was part and mainline throughout the whole event. So as a, as a user or as a viewer, I'm watching these ideas and, and being inspired. But that was not all I wanted Global Maker Day to be. I wanted it to be about our students making. So in here on this slide, my focus was really targeted towards um, giving our students a chance to be the creators while watching. So when they're watching um, at a specific time, then they then had to take a challenge at that same designated time. I gave two per hour. Um, so every half an hour we had a different speaker. And so as they came in to share, that aligned with that time frame. And so, you know, when they're working on it and creating a tallest tower, making, you know, only using five items, um, it aligned with the session that was happening at 4 p.m. So as they're watching, they're building and creating, and then they're also sharing, you'll see this here, so this is um, the way that they took whatever they created and they were posting whatever they created using hashtag Global Maker Day. So I took this GIF and built this GIF and then I put the GIF inside of Buncee. So it had the option of uploading my own GIF in here. Um, so here's some of the ways that people were taking in the past Global Maker Day and then they were using hashtag Global Maker Day to be able to share it out on Twitter um, and other social ch channels. And so we were watching that and then sharing it out. So every half an hour as we transition from the next person, we come in and we talk about, look what's being posted. Look at this idea. You know, we're con consistently pointing it back to our students being those creators and highlighting them for what they've done. Again, that virtual vendor hall being here and um, supporting the concept of how to take what they just learned and bring it back into their classroom. So a couple different things that they can take. But in this year, I did also something a little bit different. And this was making those slides for each presenter. So um, we had our pirates this year that um, we brought in and we then you know, highlighted their session I captured my Buncee again on that video, created a GIF out of it, um, and then shared it out on social media. So every uh, presenter, every half an hour um, was, had their own slide and they got to share it out on their social channels. Um, and then by building you know, these slides here, people were able to come in and see the person that was gonna be talking to them. Uh, Joy Schwartz is, phenomenal. The stuff that she shared that year with 3D printing and printing a prosthetic limb for students around the world um, was just blew me away. And surprisingly, Joy spoke very little and her students spoke the whole time. So it was the students that really took it over. They owned this project themselves. They were really passionate about it and to see these students really demonstrating what they were doing. So lots of great topics, lots of things, you know, being made and um, 
lots of, you know, great making that was happening throughout the day. So, um, you know, those, that concept, I think, was the most similar to what we had, you know, in, in previous years. This one being our latest, and this is the 2019 in October that happened. Um, you're going to see a lot of the similarities, but kind of the same concept. You know, you have your first page of slide of introduction that I'm able to share out either as a, a still picture or I can share it out even as a GIF. Um, hopefully that will populate. And there we go. Um, and I'll just do full screen so it's a little bit easier for everybody to see. Um, and then, you know, so this was our page and on this main page, you push play here and that is what would bring you into, of course, what was being pushed out to YouTube. So students can watch it on our website at globalmakerday.com, which is embedded, my Buncee is embedded on there. And inside of Buncee, a YouTube video is embedded. It's crazy. So um, kind of all around, but you know, beyond just looking at it, on um, YouTube, I have the option of highlighting our speakers and the topics that were going to be happening, um, some of the visuals that they were using to highlight what they're covering, the people to get connected to, um, the topics that they're talking about were just amazing and um, lots of just incredible feedback and responses from people. So it gave them a chance to kind of build their PLN as well. Um, so as the day went on, uh, we finished up this year for the first time with the wrap up. We talked about some of the things that we saw, just quickly kind of covering and, and highlighting our uh, aha moment throughout the day. Um, and it was just, you know, great. Again, always focus on our students designing, making. So they were always a part of this. So they went in and they created, of course, this happens in October every year. So because of that, uh, Halloween seems to fit quite nicely with what we're covering. Um, and so all of this was all brought in through Buncee content. Um, you know, I have those animated characters. I have the background images, um, the text, and even inside of the text, now having the option of that immersive reader and it being read to me and translated based upon my own preferred language. So all of that being accessible for students around the world. And then, you know, what did we create with that? You know, those students were absolutely sharing what they designed and built um, throughout the day. Um, every year we're trending on Twitter and it's wonderful because I want people to know how much is out there and available. Um, and I want our students to be the spotlight. So that's what makes that just such a cool thing. It's not us trending. The hashtag is them trending, sharing out what they're creating. So um, what's neat about this past year also is Buncee really stepped it up and said, look, uh, as part of Global Maker Day, we want to make sure that, you know, people have a chance to use this product. We want them to actually have this part of their challenges. So they got to go in and, and recreate, you know, there's challenges or even exploring the creation canvas. So um, they took the, these topics and um, essentially made their day in a Buncee on sharing out what they can create and what they can do. Um, so they had, you know, these different areas of, you know, design a work of art. Um, and then they had a design here, add a photo. So they really gave like the templates to get kids started inside of Buncee, as opposed to what, how do I use this? Well, here's multiple ways that your students can go in and design and share. So um, I love that they had those different time frames of what was going on at various times and um, using Buncee and giving them the opportunity to participate in Global Maker Day using the tool. So um, with that being said, there was, you know, just an incredible amount of items that we included. I will show one thing here on just so you can see um, what this looks like on the website. So, you know, you see it inside of the Buncee, but what does that mean for the person joining in? And this will be something that we'll be updating here um, this summer as we prepare for Global Maker Day 2020. And I wish I can tell you where that's gonna be, but it's a big secret. It's gonna be amazing though. Um, Is it Nashville? Is it Pittsburgh? Better. I'm all in just saying. So much better. I know. 
got to get you in. Okay, so with um, this is the main site that people will join in on, and I apologize for the delay here, but um, it basically gives them all the information that they're going to need on how to participate. What is this? Why do I do this? Of course, the register now is going to be where they're going to get all their information about the event, how to participate. You know, people might see it and have access to it, but if they don't have the information on how to participate, that's really the valuable piece on getting them in, in part of Global Maker Day. And then you can see on the first thing that you'll see pop up right underneath is the Buncee. So I'll let that load here for a second. Um, this also gave them a chance to um, view and experience. And if they are coming to the website, they're still experiencing Buncee, even if they're not on Buncee. Um, and so you can see right here, one of the things that people just were not getting is that they needed to go to the next page. So I added a little uh, animation saying, hey, go to the next page is right here. So they actually can see that yeah. inside of the website, you know, so that they're not stuck just having to go out. It's all because it's embedded. It's stuff that you can actually see taking place on the website. So I don't think teachers realize this. Think about how much they can do in their classroom, you know, meet the teacher nights or any type of information that they're doing. Embedding this to their website, which is something that most teachers have to have, is a website um, where that information is available about their classroom. This is a way to embed onto those sites. Um, most teacher websites, I mean, I've never seen one that didn't allow you to embed. This is a perfect opportunity to embed content onto your site. Then, you know, throughout the time, uh, people were participating and responding and, and talking. And I think this is running slow because we're live video right now, but, and uh, screen sharing. But just so you know, this, is, this hopefully is a little bit faster. The challenges from past years um, showing out some of that. We have had Stanley Black & Decker now for two past years as our um, sponsor of the event, which has been incredible. Of course, we always have our um, campus sponsor as well. So. Um, this was um, something that we can thank our, in, in our case, we, we were able to connect with um, the school in Miami, uh, Nancy Pinchev's school. And so because they have been a part of it and we valued their participation, it was a perfect opportunity to host it at their school. And I do love this. Um, this was created by Don Sturm and um, he built kind of this graphic of all the connections that happened from this past year based upon the, you know, the location of where people said they were coming from. And I know when I, um, when I talked earlier about the first year of like how many people joined in, um, I think it's just incredible to think that this past year, we actually asked how many students participated, okay? And we had nearly, um, eight, actually a little bit over 80,000 students joining in from 45 states and 42 countries. I mean, that blows my mind. You have 80,000 kids out there participating in Global Maker Day. And this is something that can continue to grow. We can continue to out, go out and reach. It's completely free. But Buncee has been that one platform that we've used consistently throughout the events that has supported us in our goals of getting our students being makers and sharing it out in a way that has been safe and effective for our classrooms around the world. So uh, it's been wonderful. It's, it's been a really, really neat experience. I do want to point out one last thing for you. And this is um, the people that have participated and helped organize this and put this together. Um, if you don't know these people, you need to know these people. They're amazing, uh, amazing people. Oh, well, you know, Amy has been part of your show as well. Katie um, is an ambassador and I think Dresic and Mary Alice. So. Um, many of us that, you know, obviously firmly believe in the Buncee product and what you guys are doing. Um, so lots of great people there to get connected to. And I have, you know, no doubt that they'll continue to be a part of it or at least heavily involved in helping to make this a successful event in the future. Yeah, that is, well, it's awesome to see just the growth that that has had from what you said, the meeting, like 18 countries and 500 classrooms, which in itself is a lot to now how many you've had. And then I knew that Dawn had created that, um, 
for you this past time, just to visualize that, like where everybody's joining in from. But what an amazing project. And I love, like just the other day, I was creating something in Buncee too. And I typed in like maker, maker spaces. And there are so many like things that have been added in the last couple of weeks. And so it's really nice, especially for me in my eighth grade STEAM course, you know, we do a lot of different topics, which, you know, augment virtual reality, but I want them to create. And I always want them to create with Buncee because they can do so much with it. If they want to put in the audio, if they want to take a selfie or do the video. And um, I didn't, I wasn't even thinking about the thing that you mentioned about YouTube, but being able to put that in to Buncee and not have to worry about all of that other, the pop-ups and things that come alongside of it. Uh, that's huge. Uh, plus the little arrow showing like where to navigate. That was that was a definite perk too, but it is really neat to see how much it has grown and the impact that it has made on so many students and educators to be able to like, oh, I, here's this tool I don't know anything about. Oh, well, let's create with it. And then you learn about each other. And then when you factor in the languages with the immersive reader, just from the beginning, 18 countries, now look at how many you have and chances are like they can all find their language that they need to go through and even for the teachers too that want to participate to be able to translate that um, and say oh yeah we can totally do this like that's awesome so thanks for sharing all that with us definitely thank you for the opportunity to share and it helps me even reflect on how much Buncee has been part of this journey that we've been going through with global maker day and um you know many other situations that i've used Buncee because it has fit kind of a niche that isn't mm -hmm. super common. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jamie, for joining us today for Coffee Talk. And if anybody wants to follow up and connect with you, what's the best way to reach you? Yeah. As far as Global Maker Day goes, uh, globalmakerday.com, you can jump in there. And as we approach the event this summer, uh, we'll be advertising and getting people to register. Um, if they want to follow me on Twitter, it is Jamie Donnelly just like this. I think it will show up my name um, <laughs> at Jamie Donnelly. Um, and then we also have at global maker. So um, this will give you a chance to connect and, and be part of, you know, really the change that needs to happen in every classroom. So uh, yeah, thank you. All right. Thanks. We'll see everybody.